So let's start, first of all, with a recap of what is this day about. First of all, introducing the Europeana platform and try to understand it to discover, to discover its educational potential. I will also present the two educational projects as a creative school and the crowd school project, two running projects that are focusing about the use of Europeana for educational purposes. There are other, I will also introduce, but I will focus on these two uh, projects. Of course, please ask your questions whenever you like. I, I, will not be offended if you stop me. So please, in any case, or send a message on a chat or raise your hand or directly ask your question. As Roberto already started with the poll, from time to time, we will also stop to propose some games, just at least to stay tuned with the presentation and be sure that you are not losing your attention. I guess with that we will not have time because we are already 10 minutes late. However, uh, there is another, let's say, webinar or seminar or uh, lesson that we can organize if you are interested in order to directly hands on and uh, and reach Europeana through a crowdsourcing process. I will let you better know uh, about this issue. Let's start with a, a game, just at least to animate a little bit the discussion. Today is the 2nd of November, and we are celebrating today the 86th anniversary of the first transmission of a famous TV broadcast company is well known all over the world. Can you imagine? Can you guess who is this company? Please also open your... It's 1936, so you have to imagine who were the key countries in this period. Ta -ta 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 -ta, no idea. It's the British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC. But this is what's just... A, a small joke just to start. Okay, let's start introducing Europeana. Europeana is a web portal. It's been created by European Union and the member states. And it's important what is that it was funded mainly by European Union, but with a strong support in terms of uh, uh, work that has been done by all the member states, and not only the European member states, but also some European countries not in the European Union. It contains a digitized cultural heritage collection item for, from more than 3,000 institutions all over Europe. At the moment, it has more than 50 million cultural and scientific items. Altogether, so what is important is that we have a single access point where we can have a look and access the information about all the materials present in European digital collection. There is a foundation in the Netherlands that has been created in order to manage, and of course, this is subsidized by the European Union. I guess that is also interesting to, to start from the scratch, really to know why there was the idea to create Europeana. Of course, already in the last centuries, at the end of the 1990s, there, was, there were a lot of projects run by independent countries, by the national governments, in order to start using information technology tool, the internet, in order to create a portal, a tool to facilitate access to information items present in museum, galleries, libraries, archives. 
In 2001, for the very first time, the European Union tried to homogenize what had been done until now in order to create a single access point. But of course, before creating a single access point, it was also necessary to homogenize what has what is, had been done until now. You can imagine that each national government had implemented the system with its own language, its own standard, and its own criteria. You know that, let's say, culture is something that strictly belong to the national typology, national culture. There are some words that have a completely different meaning if we ask to an Italian or an Englishman, Middle Age, Medioevo, in Italy start, for instance, in 1492, when the America continent was discovered by Christopher Columbus. If you ask to an Englishman, Middle Age is until 18th or even 19th century. So let's say the use of descriptions, metadata, keywords, in order to retry information was a real maze. And this was the need in order to create a first project, try to homogenize this issue. The second step was once that a common language, a common terminology had been created, to start implementing the common service. And of course, the first step was not directly working with each single painting, which single sculpture, pieces of art present in European glams, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums in order to, first of all, address the professionals, people working in the cultural institution, the Mikhail project created a portal focusing on collections. Of course, this means that the Egyptian collection in the Museum of Turin was one collection and one single item. So the description was about the content of the collection and not the single items, uh, paintings, uh, sculpture, artifacts that were present in the collection. This first one was a first attempt, not complete yet, but in any case, it was the very first issue that was moved in this direction. Then, this is some information about the Michael Culture Association, since also Steps is one member of this organization, because it's still one of the founding members of Europeana, and it's one of the organizations that most provide information about uh, the items in museum around 10 million, over the 50 million items with Europeana has been implemented, has been harvested through the help of our association, Michael Culture. Europeana today, Europeana was born officially in 2007, let's say, after a two years uh, preliminary work done once that the Google, the well-known engine search, had started Google Books. Google Books was the very first universal worldwide service focusing on providing access to cultural items. It was focusing only on books. It was focused only on few libraries, Anglo-Saxon libraries, and of course as there was the interest of the European Union, of European member states, mainly France, you know that France is very proud about everything that is concerned with the cultural issue, that proposed to create a, a single art, a single platform, an Europeana 
started to be implemented, all the museum libraries, are galleries can implement, can harvest their collection. Of course, harvesting a collection, this means to send information about think, the single items present in the museum is not too complicated, but ask for some information technology tools. So it's not so common that a single museum directly access and send the information to Europeana. There are some aggregators, so-called aggregators, that has been created at a national or sectoral level. For instance, all the museums focusing on archaeological issues have created an aggregator through an association, Carare, that perform this job. There is, for on the contrary, some other aggregators focusing on audiovisuals or the museum or fashion. In Italy, France, United Kingdom, Germany, there are, on the contrary, national aggregators that, independently from libraries or archives or museums, collect all the information from their cultural institution and transfer them to Europeana. Let's have a break and check how Europeana works. This is the home page of Europeana. And you see that, first of all, they say there are 50 million items. And here you can check about what you're looking for using single keywords. I have to say immediately what are, on the contrary, the criticism, the criticalities of Europeana. If you check, for instance, Mona Lisa, Ah, uh, well, there is a network error. I don't know why. Perhaps in this moment uh, there are some. However, let's say that uh, don't stop for a technical problem. If you check Mona Lisa, for instance, you can do also on your laptop uh, just to see if, uh, if how it works. Uh, you will see that uh, the first items that are displayed are not the uh, well-known Mona Lisa that we know at the Louvre. If you use, on the contrary, Google and use Mona Lisa directly, you will see that Mona Lisa in Louvre is the very first uh, item that appears. This means that Europeana is more at the rest in order to create presentations. There are some stories that has been created and are continuously updated. There are some themes, for instance, that has been created in order to support people navigating. And of course, this is the most useful use of Europeana. If you try immediately to check for a single group of information, the motor and the engine you know, that is used by the Europeana platform in order to retrieve information probably will disappoint you a little bit. On the contrary, if you have the time to check and to create your yeah. own collection, it's not easy. Not. sorry, there was somebody. Let's come back to our presentation. Yeah. And move. This is the example of Mona Lisa. And this is, let's say, it's the most typical example. If you check Mona Lisa, you must go to the second page. Yeah, this means that the metadata is the descriptors, the keywords that have been used are not effective. And this is something to be kept when we want to prepare also our educational materials. Europea has 
in its menu, we see the section for teachers because they have created Piana Classroom section. Piana Classroom is a section of the platform that has been created in operation of the School Net Association that includes the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of a training of the European member state. So you see that is a quite top-down approach. They are using some of the elements that are present in Europea in order to create some interesting topics, but in any case, they are, let's say, with a very European-wide dimension. There are as a uh, the European School Net Academy and the same European School Net Association that have created some other platform in order to start providing support to teachers for using Europeana. Instead of using the top-down approach that uh, is the typical one that has been presented by Europeana, in the sense that that of Ushua, Europeana strictly cooperates with the Minister of Culture, with the Minister of Education. They try to implement Europeana directly in the curricula of the European institution. And this is for reason for which they are working at the top of the institution. Steps, and this is why I'm presenting these two projects, is working on the country with schools, with universities, with organizations that are interested in implementing new tools, providing services to the round students or train or retrain their teachers in order to use the information technology for education. And this is the scope of the Creative School project that was just complete on the 31st of August 2022. Our idea was to use the educational potential that is present in European, European museums galleries in order to create educational materials stimulating creativity and critical thinking in our students. There are partners coming from seven European countries, from United Kingdom, Highland, France, Belgium, Austria, Finland, and of course, as activities that we were focusing on were concerned with the analysis of training and information need of teacher, educator, children, but also parents, how to use educational materials, cultural materials in education program. The second step was the production of training material focusing on the development of creative and critical thinking skills, engaging people with cultural heritage. The final and third steps was the production of a guidelines recommendation aimed at influencing policy makers and curriculum decision makers in order to support the adoption of a similar models also in countries in school that were not participating in the proposal. So first of all, it was created a, an approach, an educational approach, how we can, we can use cultural information coming from Europeana or also from even other platform in, in the educational schema. The report tried to summarize the key suggestion coming from the involved teacher expert 
curators, a museum educators, and was important because it created the methodology that has been used in order to de develop the educational materials. In particular, it was created a craft approach in order to identify the seven characteristics that an educational materials should have in order to stimulate a creative, a critical thinking approach for young people. To be cross-curricular and interdisciplinary, so just not to focus on a single subject matter, but try to show how each information can be reused by different subject matter, not only art history or history, literature, but also mathematics, science, biology, and so on. Respectful, we underline the critical thinking. And critical thinking is, first of all, think with your mind, with your ideas, with your, and be respectful about the opinion, the ideas of the other people. The material should be adaptable, easy to be adapted, to be used in different situations, in different contexts, should be flexible in order to be easily evaluated and to create your own simple grid. Thinking routine and strategies, so should stimulate the creativity and the fantasy of the user, should make a wise use of electronic and digital tools, and should be differentiated according to the different learning needs of different categories of users. Since September 2021, these materials have been tested in di different categories. You see that uh, we created some materials focusing on art history, citizenship, philosophy, environment, natural science, geography, history, and we tried to adapt them to different school group, age group, from seven to 11 years old, 11 14th, 14th, 18th, in order to try to adapt and stimulate teachers to work with the best of the information of the materials that we have been developing with the different categories of students. You can find more information in the Creative School AU uh, platform. And just to have a stop, I can suggest you to navigate a little bit eh, in order to see how the material has been created. So please let me move to Creative School. And of course, if you already have some question, eh, please feel free to stop me or write some information on the chat. I cannot manage the chat, so I ask Roberto and Marta if there is somebody from the chat to stop me and arise the question. So the Creative School, let's move directly to educational materials. They have been created in English and then translated also in different languages. And you see how they are organized. First of all, there is a introductory material, a PDF file that supports the teachers how to implement the model, the seminars, the workshop that has been proposed in different categories. For instance, ethical dilemmas has been adapted for the three categories, 7-11, 11-14, and 14-11, providing models different from uh, category age group to age group. There are also some additional information. You see that from time to time, we have created also some PowerPoint 
in order to stimulate the teachers with a model. For instance, we can see open that is not so uh, heavy, something concern. What could be see? Just a model. Let's say, let them live again, for instance. This is a PowerPoint. Uh, pa, 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 uh, sorry, well. Can you see? Okay, perfect. So let's see how it works. So this has been created by the student of the School of Art of the city of Bologna. And it's a, a cartoon where there are some students that are discovering modern art. Diving directly into the paintings. So you see that there are some example of uh, paintings of modern art uh, that has been revisited by the students uh, in order to create a small research that has been then presented to the, uh, their colleagues, uh, to the teacher, to other classes. And of course, uh, this is one very simple way in order to use information coming from a cultural institution into a very simple uh, educational material. Now I stop this presentation and come back to the presentation just to move to the second project that I would like to, to show you. Crowd School is a similar, is another educational project also run within the Erasmus Plus program that has a direct link with Europeana. I already mentioned at the very beginning that one of the main criticism that we can do to Europeana is concerned with the not complete information that is provided by the keywords, by the metadata that has been included to describe the single connection. Of course, the metadata as first of all, as linguistic difficulties in the sense that, let's imagine, Mid middle age. Middle age in the English word. In Italian is medioevo, Moyen Age in French. And if the user introduces the word medioevo and Europeana as not the possibility to immediately translate medioevo into middle age, Moyen Age, and any other language that is used in Europe, the user will not, will not identify, will not receive the information about the items that has been described using a language different from the user that is introducing the question at that moment. So there is the need to create a list of terminologies in order to create, to in, automatically transfer, translate all this information into the language that has been used for providing the information. Of course, this creates a lot of problems and difficulties because you need, first of all, a terminology list that is comprehensive. You have to ask the people that introduce the, the keywords to respect the terminology, and you must keep continuously updated this information. This has created some pitfalls, some difficulties in Europeana, and the 
Cloud School using the Cloud Heritage Platform has been created just a 12 Europeana to you to solve part of this issue. The scope of is first of all to identify some collections that are useful for the purposes of the schools that are participating to the experiment. They can be primary schools that just want to start looking to some specific aspect about uh, specific issues of the city or the primary school. But could be also school of art or vocational schools that are focusing on architecture or school of art and so on. The idea is to ask the student to work directly on the collection created using the European platform and enrich to run some research and enrich the content of the single item of Europeana in order to make available an additional information for further users. I am trying to simplify and to make an example just to clarify the issue. If we look at the Mona Lisa once more, we can retry the Mona Lisa if the, the Museum of Louvre, when introducing the painting, has put some keywords to identify it. The keywords could be Mona Lisa, painting, 16th century, Museum de Louvre, but could be also some additional information that could be for instance, the mountains or the landscapes that is beyond the, on, on the back of Mona Lisa, could be the color of some dresses, it could be a lot of information that try to imagine the kind of research that can be done by the users. If the Museo de Louvre did not make mention that there is a countryside landscape on the back of Mona Lisa and on the contrary the user of Europeana is interested in looking at all the paintings with a mountain countryside back landscape he will never found will never find this information and this is also the objective of uh, Crowd School of Crowd Heritage to create a tool that can support the crowdsourcing effort of people, in our case, students, that look at different collections, different items present of Europeana, discover the keywords that are missing, and can introduce these keywords into Europeana of course, after a control by professional, by expert people, in order to facilitate further the retrieval in a subsequent search. Of course, this is something that is quite complicated. We have tried to do with a gaming project where first of all, we have identified the European collection. Secondly, we have asked the students of the school that have identified, that have created the European collection to enrich the content of European with their own creativity, with their own work. The second step, we have asked the student of the other school to check what has been done by the students of the first school. And finally, in order to create a replicability of the model, we have asked the student of the, the who run the test, the pilot on the previous year to support 
their school fellow of the following years in order to create a replicability model within each school. Once more, these, these are the partners. The result that we have achieved is, first of all, to have a group of students and teachers that are able to use the crowd school tools and are able to support Europeana in enriching its educational potential. It's been created a cooperation between schools of different countries that have been working on similar connection. And in this way, we have also created, let's say, a transfer of knowledge of experience from school of school. And of course, this is an internationalization of the curriculum that is very effective. And of course, once more, we, have, we are focusing on the capacity of creative creativity in education. And of course, this is a quite useful model because support the student in thinking with themselves and identify what are the best, what is the best way to describe a painting that is displayed to their attention. There are some collections that has been created. The School of Art in Italy have created food and fashion. The primary school of Polangis has worked with cities and landscape and the Olympic spirit since it's the area where the Olympic Games will take place in 1924. The secondary school in Jaroslaw in Poland has been working with architecture and landscape and gardens. And the primary school in Barcelona in Spain has been working with musical instrument, the Gaudi architecture, food, and, and then animals with endangered species. And another important issue is that uh, since we were working with four different countries, uh, with four different languages, plus uh, English, uh, that was the common language, we've been forced uh, to create uh, a terminology list for each of the collections that has been created. So a terminology list for food, terminology list for fashion, for sport, and so on. Because otherwise, the, the Italian student should have been forced to introduce their keywords in English. While on the contrary, of course, what is important is to give the possibility to each student, also from the primary school who still does not speak as the language, then the natural, the national one, to work with this collection. This means that we have created, with the help of Wikidata, one of the different devices of, of a wiki tools of a Wikipedia, a small dictionary translating the single word that has been used for enriching the single keywords, let's say, into the different language. And of course, also creating a different hierarchy. Because for instance, if you look, if you introduce the word food, beef, or tomato, water, buffalo will be presented. On the contrary, if you introduce the word beef, only the word of the fourth level, beef, will be presented, but not the chicken or water buffalo. So let's say this is something in order to create, to show you a little bit also the complexity of the exercise. If we wanted to work in an international context, the problem of creating a terminology list in order to allow the student to work with their own national language is something that should be taken into account. And of course, this is one of the examples of using a terminology list in Wikidata, but this is already something quite complex 
and we have been organized in spring last June, some specific seminars that are still present in the web, if you're interested, in order to better discover how this kind of problematic can be solved. Of course, once more, you can find information on the website. There is also a link on Twitter. And I would stop there. We can, first of all, open the question to, to open the floor to any question, if you like. And we could also have a look to the platform in order to see a little bit the way in which the crowd heritage in the crowd school project has been organized. Here, for instance, is the page of crowd heritage. You see that there is a possibility to work in the different languages. You can simply display the content or you can sign in. Everybody can sign in, so there is no restriction. At the moment, I'm going on with my keywords. And of course, we can check one of the collections that has been created last year. For instance, arts and food in the centuries. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Pier Giacomo. I think that uh, um, crowd, uh, crowd Heritage uh, and Creative School give the possibility to understand uh, that uh, some educational, uh, uh, let's say, objectives could be pursued thanks uh, to the repository, because at the end of the day, Europeana is, uh, is mainly a tool. But of course, the tools must be used and must be adapted for different kinds of uh, uh, purposes. And yeah, it's important to remember that Europeana was born for cultural purposes. Mm -hmm. So education was not this first. And of course, the difficulties that you can see in moving to educational dimension comes from the origin. Questions for the participants? Do you have any comment, any feedback, something more that you would like, something that you are not sure that you fully understand? Uh, well, uh, I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing Crowd School and Crowd Heritage uh, because I hadn't heard about them before. It was very useful. And I will uh, ask you if it's possible to share the um, PowerPoint uh, presentation you've made because I think that you'll be interested for the teachers too. Well, uh, several of my coworkers are teachers right now. For them, it will be also useful, but for the other teachers too. And thank you once again, Pierre, Giacomo, and Roberta. No, but let's say, but everything will be distributed. Of course, what is important is that also the materials that has been developed with the creative school. So let's say the handbook for the teachers and the examples are fully available. So everything is free of use. You can reuse, modify. I already mentioned the first time that we started thinking about a possible seminar on this topic, that there is a lot to be done. It's important to start providing with example in order to check if this kind of tool can be useful, but once that you have discovered that it can be, if it's not, of course, uh, <laughs> don't worry, there are several alternatives, but in the case you discover that this kind of model can be useful, we can also repeat and go in depth eh, with something more. For instance, something that we did not manage today just because we have a few time is the way in which everybody can create a specific collection. If you are interested in creating something concerning the present of Georgia in Europeana, you can create your own collection 
logging in so providing your assets and selecting the items within the 50 millions items that are present and creating your own so you don't have every time to recreate and to make a search you already create your own gallery your own personal collection and your student can work or your teacher can work directly with this one this is the way in which we have been working when creating the collection that has been used for creative school and creative in the crowd school. Uh, if I may, Pak Giacomo, thank you very much for the presentation. As you say, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very big word uh, and it may require some time to, to digest it all, to explore it. Uh, it's not perfect, so it's sometimes you get, get lost a bit because it's very, very wide. Uh, you have Europeana, you have Europeana Pro, you have the, only the list of projects that you go through. I mean, they are under, funded under Erasmus, which are linked to Europeana, is super big. You presented two projects today, but there are several more. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I'm interested in history personally. My brother teaches history, and if you if you look into Europeana, you find then that you have also Historiana. Historiana which is very, very nice. So you really have a lot of uh, digital teaching material, which is really well developed with exercises, with lessons, with uh, uh, presentation on how to actually run that type of lessons with the gaming behind. So, I mean, it's, it's very wide, it's bottom up, which means that uh, it's very spontaneous. You have a lot of stuff which comes up, uh, I guess, on a regular basis. So. Uh, he, he needs some time to to actually study it to see what 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 what's your area of interest and and what 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 you, to, to look for you what you can find on the on the platform. Uh, I've seen that um, it's very clear what you can use and what you should maybe check before using. I mean the the rights uh, or the status of the content is clear, so there's no risk of uh, improper use uh another thing which i found very interesting is most of content is multilingual i actually expect it to be mainly in the language of the owner uh while i've seen there's lots of lots of stuff which where you can actually browse through different languages so this is something that is quite uh, useful um, i guess that it is really important huh? multilingualism is the key issue because otherwise the platform could yeah. not be managed and could not be successful there's also, of course, always the creator. So I think another element which is interesting is there's a lot of opportunities for networking. I mean, usually people who take the effort to actually engage in Europeana, publish content, is always people who's interested in actually working on those topics. And so it's people who are actually looking outwards, not inwards. So if you find content which is interesting and you want to start establishing possible projects, I think Europeana is, is a good platform also for that because it's people working on, on Europeana has <clears throat> this attitude of, of actually co-development co and, and sharing and, and working together. So I think these for me are the main elements. Uh, I think it's a, it's a very, it's a very potential powerful tool in the sense that as, as Ben Giacomo mentioned very clearly, the origin was for cultural heritage is now becoming also a tool for pedagogy and education. So it's a relatively new aspect, it's growing. Uh, so what you find now, I think, is, is not the same thing that you will find in, a, in one year or two years' time. It's, it's, it's probably when you will probably boom, uh, you will find new areas, new projects. Uh, so I think it's, it's, it's a very interesting tool with a lot of potential. Yeah, if I may comment. Uh, there are the two different approaches. Your uh, historiana is wonderful. I said that is something that is really very well done. Probably it's the most beautiful educational tool that has been created using Europeana. It took uh, it it took uh, a lot of time to be created because it's quite complicated, and of course, uh, is something that has been already created in a certain structure. So the teacher has to accept 
the materials and the work that has been done. The effort that we have been doing with the creative school and crowd school is on the contrary to provide models, but first of all, to focus on showing to any teacher how he or she can create their own materials using Europeana. So this is the way, the democratization of European a little bit, because otherwise the difficulty to create something as Europe historiana could, let's say, create a, a, a panic in the teacher, because otherwise I will not, I, by, by myself, I would never be able to do something, so because it's a huge work to be done. On the contrary, also a single teacher can do something very simple, if as the right tools, the right information on how to work with. This is an important message to be given. Yeah. I, I would uh, I would propose uh, that to, to all the participants if they if they have time, of course not now, but uh, in the following days uh, to uh, take a look at uh, Europeana first of all. Uh, you you could find the the, 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 the website. Uh, it was written in the chat as well but also to take a look at the other two uh, projects' websites uh, and to navigate. Uh, uh, as we said uh, since the beginning, uh, navigating in the Europeana website is not that easy because uh, uh, it can cause to you some confusion and misleading. And also Pier Giacomo underlines that sometimes uh, the results could not exactly be what you, what you are expecting for. Uh, I don't know, Pier Giacomo, if you wanted to to share again uh, the the Mona Lisa research, uh, if, it, <laughs> if, if you think it's useful, but just to to give an idea of how it works. And but is it, let's try if it works. If it's working now, but uh, yeah, I think that it's important to to take a look. And of course, we start from the assumption that uh, this was created as a cultural heritage repository and digitization, most of all, of uh, cultural heritage. But of course, there are some different uh, also purposes. Uh, Sorry, there is, okay. <laughs> there is still Never a network. There is still a network. Exactly. It doesn't matter. And um, are shame. I, I, I hope that uh, this could, could be useful. I'm launching another poll, a very short one, to know if uh, you think that uh, Europeana and uh, the other two projects we have presented could have content that uh, can be useful for your uh, for your training objectives which is uh, the main uh, of course uh, aim of uh, of this workshop so if you think that it could be uh, helpful in the in in the future of course as we said uh, this is not um, a quick because you you need to to go through them and to learn a little bit more but uh, we hope that uh, this could be useful for for the kind of training that uh, that you deliver usually um <clears throat> so i don't i it's uh, i think that's uh, we already reached the uh, time duration that we had promised so we don't want to spend more of your of your time i'm terminating the the poll just to show you what is what the result is uh, uh, with uh, with the percentage of of your of your answer and um, well fortunately we don't have uh, no <laughs> answer but so we have so let's say that uh, two-thirds of uh, of the participants said that this could be totally useful for um, for the content of the training objectives maybe one third is still hesitant and uh, would like to maybe to know more before uh, before using it for the for the training and um, well of course, uh, we will share with you the, the PowerPoint uh, that uh, Pier Giacomo presented and, uh, and we will keep it for up. For any question, also in the ne next days, I'm at your disposal. So don't hesitate to much. call me to contact me.
for any question. Thank you. Thank you Pichu. very much. For your thank feedback, you everybody. thank you, Per Giacomo, and thank you, everybody, for participating. We keep in touch, of course.